he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy. Like we lost them. Yeah, I guess so. What do you suppose they were up to? Oh, it's hard to tell. At least we might have stopped somebody getting killed. I wish we'd have had a good look at them. Well, the one riding bareback looked like an Indian. I ain't so sure, Hoppy, but I think I saw him on the bar 20 this morning. On the bar 20? Yeah. I hollered at him and he took off like a scared jackrabbit. You ride on into town get the supplies. I'll meet you there. I'm going to see if I can't pick up a trail. Don't you want me to go with you? I think I can manage. Somehow. Oh, Hoppy. I didn't have much hope in picking up a trail, but thought it was worth a try, especially after seeing how determined those gunmen were to shoot the bareback rider. Also, Red's remark about thinking he'd seen the boy on the bar 20 increased my interest. I wondered why he'd been hanging around and why he'd ridden off in such a hurry when noticed. very strong. I see happiness in store for you and many children. Your lifeline is long. You will live many years. I will read your destiny in one moment, Frau. Frau? That means friend. Oh, well, I don't know, I guess. Wait. The tall one you spoke of who rides the bay horse will ask you to marry him. That is all Mother Kayomi sees for you. So the bad luck will not overtake you. You must cross my palm with silver. And now for you. Well, I ain't got much time, I but... You are afraid your friends will see you? Do not be ashamed. I have read the palm for many wise men, just like you. Sit down. Well, maybe just a quick look. You have a very interesting palm. I do? Yes. You are a bachelor, and you eat much. How did you know that? It's in your hand. I see you and a man on a white horse riding to a strange adventure. I must talk quickly. 
Tell Frau Cassidy he must ride two miles north of town. He will find a sign. What are you talking about? Why should I tell you? Shh, quiet. Deliver my message and say to him, Calvato. Good things will come to you. I see love in your heart line. To keep the evil spirits away, you must cross my palm with silver. Oh. There you are. I sure don't want to get into any trouble. A thousand thanks. Remember what Kayomi has said to you. Yeah. Red sheepishly admitted he hadn't bought the supplies. He'd wasted his time having his fortune told. He started telling me what the old gypsy woman said. When he said I was to ride two miles north of town where I'd find a sign, I didn't take much stock in it. But when he mentioned the name Calvato, it struck a responsive chord in my memory. I wanted to talk to the gypsy woman at once. Red said she was sitting right over there. The fortune teller was gone. Red mentioned the man she'd seemed afraid of. He too had disappeared. I told Red to mount up, we'd get the supplies later. north, I explained why the name Colvato interested me. Seven years ago, the Bahara tribe of gypsies were in this section when Wells Fargo was robbed of a $30,000 gold shipment. An old gypsy called Colvato was found murdered. However, the money wasn't recovered and the killing was never cleared up. The whole tribe just vanished into thin air and nothing had been heard of them since. Glancing over my shoulder, I caught a fleeting glimpse of two riders. I cautioned Red not to tip off. We knew we were being followed. sure it was the same two men we had seen chasing the bareback rider and Red thought the smaller one was the man he'd seen on the street. We were two miles north of town. Red thought I'd gone out of my mind. But as I looked around, I saw the gypsy sign. A piece of cloth signifying there was a message nearby. I knew what we'd find near that bush. I showed it to Red. The twigs pointing to the right indicated a turn in that direction. If the long side of the twigs were to the left, I would have turned that way. The three stones told another message. The first stone was a larger one. It 
meant I would be received as a friend. If this stone were smaller than the other two, it would mean danger. The two stones farthest to the right designated a distance of two miles to be traveled before I reached my destination. Red expected all kinds of trouble. He thought if anyone wanted to see us so badly, they should be there to welcome us. However, I had an idea that gypsies were near and would soon show themselves. Mother Kayomi had talked to Red before. I introduced them formally. Then we met Artera and the girl Morella. Artera was the son of Colvato, the man suspected of the Wells Fargo robbery. For the past seven years, the boy had been in bondage to Lasho, king of the Bahara tribe. According to their laws, he had to work out his bondage to pay for the disgrace his father had brought upon the tribe. Two weeks ago, Artera became of age. He ran away with Morella and the old woman. Morella and Artera were to be married, but they couldn't enter into a marriage ceremony until the boy cleared his father's name. My father did not steal the $30,000. Before he died, he whispered to Mother Kayomi that he'd taken the money from the real Robert and intended to return it to the rightful owners. Artera's father could not tell me much, except that the money was buried on your property and that he had left a sign. Did he have any idea who it was? He did not live long enough to give me a name. Mother Kayomi and I violated tribal laws, running away with our taro. But I would rather die under King Lasho's whip than to be separated from our taro. You will help us. Oh, of course I will. They try, Fral. You knew my father? I knew him very well. He was a good man. He did not steal. We will find you gold, and I will return it to you, Wells Fargo Company. Doggone it, Artero. Why haven't you done something about this before? Red, he's already told you. These people live according to their own laws. Now, where is King Lasho and the rest of your tribe now? Many miles from here. A five-day ride. And who were those two men you were running away from this morning? I do not know. They followed us soon after we left. Now, we'll keep an eye on them. We have only this knife for protection. We have not even built a fire to cook our food for fear the smoke would betray our camp. Well, how long since you had Two days. Two days? Yes. Without food? <laughs> I'm afraid my friend couldn't stand that. You better hook up your horses and come over to my place. You can cook and eat there. Oh, Frau Cassidy. Sure, you might just as well since you'll be on the bar 20 hunting for the money anyway. Hey, by the way, Artero, didn't I see you on the bar 20 this morning? Yes, but you see, I was just... Come on, Rad, come on. Seem funny to you. Well, the good it did bring him over here. Well, they figure so long as our terror has a spell on him, it'd bring him bad luck if they came into the house. Bad luck or good luck didn't affect their appetites any. Nor yours either. I'm going over and see Mother Kaomi. I haven't the slightest idea what kind of a sign she's looking for to find that money. Come on. Be with you as soon as the pencil. If they don't finish you.
Ah, uh, from Cassidy. Ah, you feel better? Yes, thank you. This hot food does much for us. Ah, uh, that's good. Where is Mother Kaomi? In the wagon. She wished to consult her cards. She thinks it will help her to find the gold. <laughs> we sure need something. <laughs> Tell me nothing. Ah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. About finding a sign that may indicate where that money is hidden. There must be a curse upon us. Oh, but there can't be. You're only trying to right a wrong. You have great wisdom, Frau Cassidy. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to send Red out with you. I want you to search every tree and every rock. Colvato must have left a sign that you can understand. We will do as you bid. But are you not coming with us? I'll be riding nearby. I still have an idea that those men will be around watching every move you make. But we are on your property. Yeah, but a few fences won't stop those killers. You are a good man. The blessings of our people will be upon you. Thank you. For two days, I circled about keeping an eye open for those gunslingers. They were around all right. I never saw them, but did cross their trail. They had been joined by a third man whose horse left a peculiar track. Then I found a campsite where they bedded down. That third man was really unusual. This was where and how he slept. was it? It was a knife. Boy said it belonged to his father. Any sign of the gold? No, not yet, but I've dug so many holes. I'm beginning to feel like a gopher. <laughs> You're beginning to look like one, oh, too. Come on. I would know that dagger a hundred years later. He is right. The dagger was Calvato's. I've seen it many times. Did you find any other sign? Nothing. Well, we better keep working. Fortunately, I stumbled onto something the others had missed. The tree had grown in seven years, but there on the bark were faint marks which carried around the tree. Hey, look at this. I showed the gypsies the outline Colfato must have cut in the bark when he buried the money. Mother Kaomi excitedly interpreted the sign at once. The gold was buried under the tree all right, but on the opposite side. You hit on something. At last, I can return this money and save our names from disgrace. Oh, Tora, I'm so happy for you. Well, we better get this gold back to the house and count it. To be sure, but it is all there. Calvato would not take one coin. Well, let's get her in the wagon. Yeah, and we better keep our eyes open for those three men, too. Yes. Three men? That's right. Another man joined them. Did you see him? No, I didn't, but I have an idea who he was. Well, but who? What? Now, don't ask questions. Remember, gypsies don't accuse anyone unless they're real sure. Oh. oh. You oh. will go with me to the Wells Fargo Company? No, not just yet. But I do not understand. Our terror, just taking the gold back isn't going to clear your father's name. But I will tell them the truth. He did not steal it. I know, I know, and they'll thank you for your honesty. But how are you going to prove he didn't steal the money in the first place? He is right, Arturo. We still could not take the marriage vows. What shall I do? I think the first thing we better do is get out of this open country of that gold. Then I have an idea how I can clear your father's name. Good. We gave
gave the gypsies plenty of supplies, then loaded the boxes and sent them on their way with our best wishes. As they drove off, Red and I hoped we were being watched. Pretty heavy. They can't all be filled with gold. Better send him back here. You keep your eye on the gypsies. Jeff wants you. You got three boxes here. Which one of them's got the gold? They're all heavy. This one here in the middle. Get your hands up. Get on off that horse. Get on here. I had an idea you were the one back of this. You hired these two gunnies here to follow this boy around so you could get your hands on this gold again. Isn't that right? Yes. There were only three people that knew anything about where this gold was or what kind of a box it was in. The Wells Fargo Company, this boy's father, and you. When you came in here and picked out the right box, I knew you were the one that originally stole it. And just to make you feel real good, there's no gold in any of the boxes. They're filled with rocks. So you stole the money and killed my father. Well, the old fool, he wanted to return it. So I killed him when he refused to tell me where he hid it. Wait a minute, Dr. Carroll. We'll let the law take care of him. Yes, Frau Cassidy. All right, get on your horses. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, 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 Red. I Goodbye. hope you can come to the wedding festival. We're going to try to. Thank you for everything. To try, Frau. And a long life to you, Mother Kyle. Yes, goodbye, friend. Uh, fr uh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hey, Hobby. Yeah? How did you know the third member of that gang was a gypsy? I found where he slept. Oh, yeah. I don't understand. They're very superstitious people. When they sleep on the ground, they put little twigs all around them. It keeps the evil spirits away. Oh, yeah. I don't understand. Come and get it! That you understand, don't you? Let's get it. <laughs> Hi there, friends. You know, sometimes a smile will buy things that money can't buy. But there's something pretty important that goes with that smile. Good teeth. 
A lot of people worry about going to the dentist. Remember that he's just as nice a guy as any other guy, and he wants to help you. So go and see him at least once a year, maybe twice a year. Brush your teeth good twice every day, too. Will you do that for me? There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys raised. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. He'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. Hop along, 